Carl. Welcome back. Six Here we go. Now, look, we're not going to have a row. We're going to have a civilised discussion. Oh, OK. I had a big response from you at this time yesterday, you, the viewer, uh, after I reported comments made to me by a source. Uh, he's a dentist. He's got over 30 years' experience in the business. And he said to me, quite in a relaxed way, that more and more NHS dentists are reluctant to perform tooth extractions and they're referring patients to A&E. And therefore, some people are waiting months to have a rotten tooth pulled out and they're in agony. Now, a lot of you called in and emailed in to say, yup, Richard, that's me. And, and we've just got chapter and verse from many of you who've been told by NHS dentists they won't pull the tooth. But the industry, quite rightly, have pushed back, saying that it's not that simple. Right. Somebody who says uh, they have an issue with this, they describe the comments as grotesque and fiction, It's the chair of the British Dental Association. <laughs> uh, and so he has come in to put Richard in the dentist chair and uh, we are going to see him perform... I will open wide. Yeah, that interview <laughs> in just a moment. But first, let's have a look at how access to NHS appointments stack up pre and post the pandemic, because it's had a significant effect. Yeah, we've got some figures here. Uh, in the two years before the pandemic, 50% of adults in England had seen an NHS dentist, but that number has since fallen to 34%. 59% of children were seen pre-pandemic, 45% between 2021 and 22, despite the fact restrictions on dental surgeries were lifted. Uh, spending on NHS dentistry has increased by £200 million compared to 10 years ago, so the money's coming in. But the British Dental Association says that it's failing to keep pace with inflation and demand. Well, just like anything else, really. And the organisation is warning that an extra £1.5 billion is needed on top of the £3 billion that they get each year. Eddie Crouch, chair of the British Dental Association. Uh, what do you want to say to Richard <laughs> and his source? And so, and so says the viewers, but we'll come to that in a minute. Well, yesterday morning, my phone never stopped ringing from bet, yeah. early in the morning when people getting so angry about the fact that you were castigating, really. Mm -hmm. uh, many people who work very, very hard at the coalface every day yep. doing exactly the thing that you said that NHS dentists don't do. Pulling now, teeth. Yeah. I mean, many of my colleagues uh, work both in the NHS and privately. Uh, I guess you were trying, trying to... In, in, sort of intimate that, you know, it was only when they were doing NHS patients that they weren't taking teeth out. And that's completely wrong. I mean, sadly, at the moment, many people are actually losing teeth that could be saved uh, because we either haven't got the workforce, they're presenting late, or it's costing them too much money to actually right. put it right. Well, I would say to you, to you and to you, the, the people who contacted you yesterday, don't shoot the messenger. I mean, I'm a reporter and I report what I'm told. I mean, I'm, this wasn't my personal opinion yesterday. I was reporting what a, a veteran dentist had told me and it sparked, I have to tell you, a huge response from people. I, look, I'm just going to read out two to you here um, because otherwise we'd, we'd be here all day. Mary, uh, she, she's contacted us to say, I've had this experience. An NHS dentist was not capable of removing my husband's tooth. He was told by way of excuse that he has a small mouth and too small to work in, which is very strange, seeing how my husband has had regular checkups and treatments before with no problems at all. And one other, out of hundreds. I had a toothache for four weeks. All they kept giving me was antibiotics. I, this is what my, my source told me, and said they couldn't remove the tooth, so I went private, and the man took up my tooth straight away. Um, we've had so many of these, and... Here's a quote from your own sort of journal, your in-house journal, the, the British Dental Journal, saying that they did a study in the UK evaluating the perceptions of recently graduated dentists about their willingness to perform extractions. Almost all the respondents said that the teaching at their dental school had given them the knowledge but confidence levels to perform surgical extractions were considerably lower. And that's the point. They're trained, yes, of course they're trained to do it, but they seem very unwilling to get the forceps out and to pull the tooth out. Well, uh, I mean, you're right. The litigation in this country for dentists is actually a real serious problem, and it does cause defensive dentistry, and that's, so that's bad. Like defensive dentistry? Yeah, m many of my colleagues are worried about litigation. Sorry, what's defensive dent dentistry? What do you mean? They're actually carrying out dentistry that actually protects them, in a way. Um, from, from litigation and from regulation. What, you mean by not pulling a tooth out? And no, 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 AD? being more cautious about actually carrying out more advanced treatment. Really? And that is a real worry. I, I agree with you there. That, mm. that is a real worry. But 
to actually say that many of my colleagues aren't taking out teeth on the NHS and actually referring to A&E, A&E is the wrong place for people to go with dental problems, for sure, because... But, uh, they are being, but I'm sorry, but they are being referred to A&E. I mean, we've no, got no, dozens no, and dozens being, of case examples here. No, they're not. They're being referred to secondary care. They're being referred right. to colleagues who work in specialist services, doing specialist services for dental patients in hospital. That's not A&E. So, please... Viewers out there, don't turn up at your A and E to get your teeth sorted because it's the wrong place. No, no, no one's suggesting that they go straight to A and E. What? what well, people are... are sadly because they mm. can't get access. Oh, because they can't get an they, appointment. They can't get access on the high street, and that is where the fundamental problem is. We need a service that's actually fit for purpose, adequately funded, and if we if we're not going to get that, then we have to have an honest conversation mm -hmm. with the public and the profession, and politicians about what sort of dental service they actually want. Well, then how people. do... That's fine. That's, that's a sort of long-term fix. But how do we fix the well, issue? Well, it needs to be a short-term fix because yeah. thousands of my colleagues are leaving the NHS on a daily... on a weekly basis. Mm. You know, many, many... Over 2,000 dentists have left the NHS in the last two years. And why? What's, what's their prime motivation for doing that? Be because the contract that we work to, we've been promised, will be fixed. And every mm -hmm. single year, it's not fixed. Mm -hmm. We're waiting too long for it to be fixed, and that is a real problem. If I had uh, an issue today with my tooth, and I went to my NHS dentist and I said, um, do you think that this is a tooth that needs to be extracted? Would my NHS dentist take my tooth out? In, in the vast majority of cases, yes. Yeah. I mean, if you're having something done... Uh, I was speaking to one of your colleagues earlier. She's, she's got a difficult wisdom tooth to be taken out. You'd want that taken out by someone who takes lots and lots of wisdom teeth out. Mm. So but that if it might not be done in the chair when Absolutely. you go to your normal, no, for, regular for, dental appointment. For the real benefit of the patient. That's likely to be done in a hospital. The, I think it's really interesting what you said about defensive yeah, dentistry, mm. because that seems to be... I think that would have raised a number of alarm bells. So... How many times do you think dentists are going, I can't... Because we're going back to this issue that Richard raised, that his source told him, dentists are reluctant to perform extractions, according to this um, source. And according to the British... Uh, yeah, and, and, yeah, well, that's right. They're trained to do it, but, but they, they don't, don't have to. confidence to do it. But I'm interested in this defensive dentistry because they're worried about legal action. How often do you think that happens because they're worried something might go wrong and they won't do it? Well, I mean, in a profession as large as ours, I'm sure it's happening to a lot of my colleagues. The vast majority of my colleagues build up confidence throughout their career. I've qualified 38 years ago. You know, I'm certainly confident in doing lots and lots of things. Many of my younger colleagues who've actually trained through a pandemic and perhaps not had the experience within a dental school mm -hmm. are coming out probably less experienced I'm a bit more worried about Absolutely. that. But they will gain that experience with time. So but it's actually... interesting, yeah, because what, so what you seem to be saying is you acknowledge the point that uh, there are dentists who are reluctant for a number of reasons to take teeth out. The, but your issue was that it was... The criticism was too broad... Too generalised. ..too widespread and absolutely. suggested... Absolutely. Well, that's why you're here. So, so we, so, uh, uh, absolutely. So we, can, so we can drill down into it. And, <laughs> sorry to, to, to <laughs> use the button. Look, there is one other issue, and it's, it's very closely linked, and that's to do with, with equipment. A lot of the calls that we, we've had say that, that one of the reasons dentists won't do more complicated uh, work, surgery, in, the, in, this, in their surgery, is they don't have the right tools. Um, Andy, via email, um, says... Uh, let's have a look. No, sorry, this is Karen. So says, I was referred to a private dentist for a root canal because my NHS dentist said that she didn't have the tools to do the job. Luckily, I had the money to pay the £850, which was worth spending to keep the tooth, and... Victoria, his email to say, I need a root canal filling done again. My dentist, quote, does not have the equipment to do it, close quote. So I've been referred to a private specialist and quoted £800. What's going on there? Surely they've got the gear to do a root canal, don't they? Well, I mean, more advanced root canal treatment needs microscopes, expensive kit. Uh, the, and sadly, the, the NHS funding doesn't actually allow the dental surgery to buy that. You know, many of my colleagues are having to do private work to actually cross-subsidise their NHS treatments. Uh, and without proper investment to allow us to buy the modern equipment... Uh -huh. NHS dentists will probably not be able to afford some of this more expensive kit. Yeah. All right, well, listen, I'm very grateful to you for coming down from Birmingham. Um, we, you know, we, we did stimulate a huge response. Thank you. Um, and you made some very good points. Thank you very much for coming in. Thank you very Thank much. You. Oh, Thank I like you. that. That's, that's good. That's good. We had done a handshake. <laughs>